Yes, good morning and welcome along to Good Morning Ascot for day four of the Royal Meeting. Joining myself, David Jennings this morning is Natalie Green, Paul Keeley, my usual partners in crime, and we've got a special guest for a special day. It is Mr. Bruce Billington. Oh, me. Hello. How are you doing? <laughs> yeah, First well. of all, massive congratulations. Was on the podcast with Bruce last Friday. We were all asked for Royal Ascot nap, of course. Disaster for most of us. And Bruce Millington came up with Eldar Elderov at 10 to 1. Never in doubt. Did you fill your boots? Uh, I had a decent bet. Yeah, it was good. It was good. But I must admit, I didn't think I'd got up in the photo. I'm normally pretty good on photos, but I thought I, we might have blown that. So I was extremely pleased. So you won twice verdict. then? Absolutely, yeah. Brilliant. Well, very well done. Thank you. Yes to the folks. We're going to talk about the action, obviously, today. But we have to talk about yesterday, first of all. What a palaver. First of all, the first race, the Riddler. Kiel's carnage. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what you have to do to get disqualified in Britain. Well, <laughs> probably, first... probably winning by a length and three quarters does help. Yeah, it, it does. But I mean, you know, um, Enrillo, when he won the Betfair 65 Gold Cup, was a perfectly good on-merit winner of that, wasn't it? But he got thrown out. Now, you can't, I mean, how can you take out two horses in a race? And still be allowed to keep it. I don't. I, I, I just don't understand it. If it's deemed worthy of a ten-day ban, then how does the horse keep the race? Exactly, Bruce. Yeah, it was crazy. Didn't look good. It was crazy. It was dangerous. It was reckless, and it was an awful, awful sight. And you cannot keep. Kills is right. You cannot keep the race if you ride like that. It's just downright dangerous. If you let that take on and become the norm, you're going to have injured jockeys and you're going to have injured horses. It's really, really poor. And what I think was, in Paul Hannigan's he head was, I can do this and still win the race and right. get away with it. Yeah. I think that's in jockeys' minds. They're going, mm. like, I need to do something really crazy bad. And I'll tell you what as well, DJ, it's these blimmin' whips. If he's got both hands on the reins, that horse doesn't do that. He's actually encouraging it to go across mm. the others by whipping it and not pulling his, his... He did everything wrong. It was awful. I don't know. I've just seen a little bit from Ruby Walsh on ITV and he says you don't steer a horse mm -hmm. with the whip, you steer it with the reins. Exactly. And he was, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so I have both hands on the reins. It, you know, mm. um, Lewis Hamilton doesn't ride mm. around in a Formula One Grand Prix with one hand on the wheel, does he? <laughs> there, is, there, there is the mentality of, of win at all costs, isn't there? I mean, even yeah. there, was, uh, there was one earlier in this week and you got Johnny Myrtle afterwards saying, um, you know, because the one horse, can't, I can't remember what it's called now, comes through. Uh, uh, and he said, don't worry about that, win the race first. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that is the, that is the mentality. And, you know, it, it's going to take another bad accident before anything's done about it. The rules must be wrong in Britain uh, to not be able to throw a horse out, throw a, uh, a horse out for a jockey riding like that. And, of course, it was your poor, brave nation that was taken well, out. One of them, you know, he was one of them. Uh, I thought he was slowly getting to Wallbank. Whether he'd actually won or not is another matter. I wouldn't say with any confidence that he would. Yeah, uh, I, I can. He wouldn't. You know, I mean, you know, no, no, no. I mean, if you, you know, if you're allowing, uh, if you're allowing that we get rid of the Riddler, who did, you know, it was obviously the best horse in the race. Would he have finished second? I'm not 100 percent certain that he would. Mm, yeah, no, it was. You know, so. it right, was, Natalie. It was a bit Max. We're Verzappen, starting with a bit of wasn't it? drama. It was a bit Max Verstappen. It was like, you, yeah, it, there is a point where you know you've you've got to be safe. And actually, don't underestimate like the closing stages when the horses are all out. Brave Nation got absolutely chested. Chester. Yeah, he went straight. It's, you know, it's, you can't do that to a horse. It's, it's not going to be. It's not nice. You know, you flat out running and you just boom. It was very, very scrappy, very messy race. And part it. of the problem as well, Bruce, is <clears throat> after the race, after this happened, and we're all going, "Oh my God, this looks awful. This looks horrific." And everybody's going, "I should have hope and be thrown out." That's the thing. Nobody thought he was going to actually lose the race. I, yeah, I mean, when I was, I'm a lot older than you, DJ, and I can remember horses being thrown out uh, for a lot, lot less than that. Parra Villa How? Yeah, Remember him and yeah, the whip red? Absolutely. <laughs> um, you know, we, we, we need, it's very rare now, isn't it? Mm. Whereas in France and other jurisdictions, they monitor it properly, they've got strict rules, they apply them. We need to do that here. We, we need to get back to put jockeys realising <coughs> that if they do stuff like that, they won't keep the race. What, James Doyle had come off by nation, definitely would have been thrown out, wouldn't it? Mm, that's like, it. You know, it and doesn't did, matter how and he did far well not, And he did well not to. He did, yeah, he actually yeah. did. And in a roundabout way, I was kind of delighted for Paul Hannigan because obviously, tricky start to the season, losing the Richard Fahey job, but uh, nice for him to get Royal Ascot winner, Bruce. Well, I don't, no, I like Paul Hannigan. He's been two time champion jockey, he's a nice guy, but I, I don't take any pleasure from him winning that race. How can you? It was ridiculous. You cannot ride like that. Bruce has taken no nonsense today. He should have been thrown out, and I think we all agree. The Gold Cup, folks. Oh, Nat, 
What were your thoughts initially after the race? Was Stradivarius unlucky? Was he the best horse in the race? Well, I was on, I think you were as well, Kiprios. Um, he didn't look very comfortable the first part of the race, Kiprios. I didn't think at all. I was like, what's going on? The reins were a bit slack. He was off the bridle. That's him, though. Yeah, but worse than I thought it was going to be, if I'm perfectly honest. When I was watching the race, I was like, oh, and he just didn't look happy at all. So he showed some attitude off that bend to then win. I couldn't believe it. In running, I would have been like, oh, no, disaster. Um, yeah, not great for Frankie and... Sort of various. I just, I just don't like all the, all the hate. I don't like all the social media hate personally. Um, he's still a quality jockey. Is it how he wants it to go? Is Ascot going how Frankie wants it to go? Absolutely not. I think he'll know that himself. He's had enough, enough stick. Um, Stradivarius was, was great. And uh, yeah, again, it wasn't, wasn't the dream, was it? Paul Keeley, we're going to rewind 24 hours. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. you were. <laughs> Bong. Kiprios will completely blow out. Yeah. Yeah, Stradivarius I'm, will go off favourite. I like it. Stradivarius will win comfortably. So you got the hat trick up anyway. Yeah, yeah. I said Burn and Victory. I thought Burn and Victory was going to win for a minute as yeah, well. That, that was a good shout. That was a great one. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I like Kiprios. Um, and all the places too. And when, when he when he started off, I thought, oh, this is going quite well, you know. And it, and it didn't happen. I think he's. I actually think he was the winner on merit. They were really quick in uh, in the straight. And. The thing about Frankie, I don't get all the hate, but I mean, all jockeys, all jockeys make mistakes. All jockeys uh, have bad days uh, and good days. Now, I think when you're older, you start to second guess yourself a little bit. And all that time looking across, looking across, he spent the entire race remembering what happened last year mm. and thinking, oh, I've got to get out, I've got to get out. Like, you know, and of course, if he'd have stayed where he was, uh, he'd have got the run. Now. Obviously, he stayed where he was last year and didn't get the run. That's how it happens. Look at Kieran Fallon earlier in the week on Mal June. Uh, it's, it's one of those things. Like, you know what I mean? There's two, there's two things he could have done there. And the choice he made last year was wrong. The choice he made this year was wrong. It's just, it is one of those things. I don't think he would have won, to be okay. honest, because I think they were really quickening mm. up. Best horse one, Bruce? Probably, yeah, yeah. I back Mojo, so my initial thought was I was slightly unlucky. And isn't he a great horse, by the way? Second in the mm. derby, second in the ledger, second in the gold cup. I hope he gets a, a big one for his connections. He ran really well. <coughs> I, the way I would look at Frankie's situation there is that it's kind of like a penalty taker. You choose to go one way and the keeper goes that way and he saves. If the keeper goes the other way, you look good. On another day, you know, he wasn't, he can't know when he makes that decision to come wide that there's definitely going to be a gap opening up on the inner. He's just unlucky. It's one of those things. It's a racing decision. He made the wrong decision, but he made what he thought was the right decision at the time. And if you look back on Frankie de Torre's career record, has he made more good decisions than bad ones? Of course he has. Mm. So that's it. Everyone's getting all excited about the fact that um, the, the owner and the trainer were, you know, did point out the fact that it was a bit of jockey error, but it's yeah. nothing. It's no drama. It's quite okay to point out that a jockey's got it wrong. He'll, he'll, be, he'll be fine. He'll probably come out and win today and everyone say, what a brilliant it, he is. I have to say, it was fascinating being in the winner's enclosure in the parade ring afterwards and seeing Frankie and John Gosling. And if you get the racing post today, page 16, Lee Motter said, uh, writes a piece on the whole incident and being there and just captures it absolutely beautifully. Page 16, the racing post today, read it and you get to learn all about the, the dynamics afterwards between John Gosling and Frankie Dettori. It was fascinating to watch. Any other highlights from yesterday, Bruce, for you, from a punting perspective? Uh, no, certainly not. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, look, it was just yet another amazing day. It was ridiculously hot again. I mean, like how you boys are doing five days down there with all the club, Brian, I don't Besides know. Besides me, I know. Yeah. I, I've, I've just really enjoyed the meeting, and we've got two phenomenal days to come. It's just been a brilliant, brilliant Royal Ascot. It's been lovely to see the stands full again, and, yeah, I mean, I had a great day there Tuesday. I was going to say, you were there for pleasure on Tuesday. Yeah. For for viewers that are watching and have never been to Ascot, just sell it to them for 30 seconds. Okay, well, the first thing is, it's not snobby, okay? That's the first, because I've, I've got people who've never been, and they go, oh, it's all snobby. It's absolutely not. Everyone is there, every, you know, from every walk of life. Everyone's having fun. I regard it as like one big, giant, happy wedding. Everyone's just there, dressed up, loving, looking smart. It's absolutely brilliant. There's loads to do. The course put on a great show. And you sh if you've never been, go. It is absolutely superb. Bruce, you sold it better than I ever could. <laughs> a big, massive wedding. Let's go to the wedding today. And at 2.30, we kick off with the Albany Stakes. And there has been a major plunge here in the last couple of days. It is on Maj, who's currently favourite.
which is hard to believe given that Mediate uh, meditates sorry was favoured for the for the, certainly the last ten days or so. Uh, Queen's Ollie is next in the market. You have been really, really keen on Maj for quite a while for this race. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she just looked. She looked superb when she won at, at Newmarket. Come, came, came through on the rail. Went through one by, one by I think four and three quarter lengths. Um, jockey easing up, and just, just, just the way she went through the race uh, and the speed in which she picked up. I just thought this is a top class filly. And then you go and have a look at the pedigree. She's by exceeding Excel. Who had such a good record on straight on the straight track at uh, Ascot with his progeny, and she's a half sister of Modern Games. who won the Breeders' Cup mile last year, the French Guineas this year. She's got the pedigree with it. Uh, she's clearly inherited a fair amount of his ability, and I think she's got a big, big future. She is your strongest fancy of the day. She is, yeah. No, I don't normally get involved. I don't normally get involved in the, in in the shorties, but I had a magical lagoon one yeah. yesterday. That was, not, that was the only thing I got right all day. Have you seen how many tips he's put in the paper today? Yeah, I've thrown. Out, I, know, I had a bad day. I had a bad day yesterday, but I've I know I've thrown a lot of darts today. But I do fancy lots today. And and Morge, Morge, if she doesn't win, I'm, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm going to go in with the rest of the day with less confidence Double because I'd, I'd, the first. I, I, yeah, <laughs> so, be, it'd be a triple. I think. I think. I just think she'll win. She's very, very. This good. could be a dangerous thing to do. Okay, mm. but I want to get into the mind of Paul Keeley. Okay, so uh, yeah, I know. I know. Calm down. Calm I don't down, even okay, understand. Calm down. Me, We're talking about racing. Okay, so today, Maj is seven to four at the moment. It's mm -hmm. going to be in around twos. I know you a long time, right? Mm. You are at pains to put up a horse like that, so you must really fancy it. What makes you put up a horse at that price rather than not put it up maybe earlier on in the week with something I else? I don't know. You just get something in your like you said. Just get something in your head. I'm absolutely convinced that she's top class, uh, you know, and I hope she'll show it. And you know, um, meditate being a drifter. Aidan O'Brien's drifting two-year-olds haven't performed that well, have they? No. Right. You know what I mean. So the market seems to be speaking in in the right way about their chances. So there are Paul Keeley's nine tips in today's race and post. Exciting Maj can get you off to a flyer in the Albany. And Natalie Green, the married couple are green again. Is are back on good terms. You can't not agree. When Cache won it, that was impressive. When Maj won, it was jaw-dropping. She gave Saeed um, his first two-year-old win of the season. She's physically well-developed. You have to look out for that with these fillies. She's got all the right bits and all the right places. When they physically mature, that's when you want to get on them. When she came out the dip, you mark it, the change in tempo for me was awesome. I don't, oh, I don't always get, people might think I do, but I don't actually always get really excited about a horse. And I'm really, really excited about more. That was her ticket to Ascot um, on her day. But look, it, the atmosphere is going to be different. The heat's going to be different. You have to take it in, even if, well, we're not going to be wrong, but even if we are wrong today, <laughs> uh, she still looks seriously smart. So, uh, honestly, all of her breeding, Kiel's has already um, alluded to that, but it's just it's the way she's developed, the way she picked up. Um, and Ray Dawson, yeah, it was really pleasing. Would it be fair to say this <clears> is <throat> the most exciting horse that you're going to see today? Um, one of, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Bruce, we have two uh, strong, very strong votes for Marge. Is it going to be three? No, I'm going to look elsewhere. I think Marge is obviously the likeliest winner, but you don't get any prizes for that. Um, the horse that she beat at Newmarket, Believing, if you go back and look at that race again, Believing had a really, really rough passage. And when, the, having had the door slammed in her face, she finally got daylight and she ran on really well to snatch second. She then went to Wolverhampton for a little race. Her dam is called Misfortunate, and she's misfortunate, or certainly unfortunate, because she came out 10 lengths behind them at Wolverhampton. Mm. Still came through and won really, really well, trained by the brilliant, brilliant George Bowie. I think at 20 to one with a few extra places, I'd rather back believing and maybe do the favourite to beat me as well mm. than back the favourite. But obviously, you, you make a, a strong case for a very strong, obvious favourite. But I just think believing each way is a really interesting bet. And viewers, do watch that race last time because it was remarkable. You think it's gone when she missed the break. It looks over like. Yeah. And then she won quite comfortably, she really. Did. Came up the middle of the track. It's yeah. probably not a great race, but mm. it was a really, really good performance. Mm. So a shout out for believing uh, for Bruce Millington. One at a bigger price that I thought could run well is Cathy Come Home for Carl Burke, who said there's not a great deal, in today's paper, said there's not a great deal between Cathy Come Home and Dramatise, which is obviously, that's nice to hear if you fancy Cathy Come Home. But I thought she was really impressive and travelled really strongly at Musselburgh. She's 16 to one. I thought she could run really well. But it's got to be Maj for me, I think, Maj. 
as Paul and Nat has said, could be a superstar. That is the opener. That is the Albany at 2.30. Moving on to the first Group 1 of the day. It is the Commonwealth Cup. It is the sprinting stakes for three-year-olds. And Perfect Power is currently our 4-1 favourite. Eraz is 11-2. It is 13-2 El Caballo. And Twilight Jet, 8-1 Bar. Perfect Power, Bruce. I think he's going to do it. I think over six is his trip. Obviously won at the meeting last year. I thought he ran fine in the guineas. He just didn't stay. I think he's just better than these. I think, keep it simple here, perfect power. I've done the opposite. I've, I've gone keep it complicated and try and <laughs> dig one out at a huge price. And I've got uh, that race at Newbury where Air Eyes uh, came through and everyone thought it was a little bit unlucky not to win. The, the, most of the front six are running again. And the one that was fourth in that race, Roger Varian's uh, Rizk, ran well. A little bit green, hang a little bit. But stayed on really nicely, finished fourth, right in the mix with all these, and he's 80 to 1. It cannot be 80 to 1. There is just no way. So this is very much a value case here, okay? You can get six places. Rog in the paper today, and obviously Rog is in my good books after Eldar Eldroth. He says, look, you know, he's got to step up a little bit. We put blinkers on, inexperienced, coming to hand. We really like him, and he's going to outrun his odds. And that's what I think. So I am going to take a chance at 80 to 1 with a ton of extra places on Rizk. Oh, we love that. We love that Rizk. Number 10 on your race card for Roger Varian and Holly Doyle, 80 to 1. That'd be nice, Bruce. A case of risk and reward, hopefully. <laughs> like you it. know he was elder, wouldn't you? Worth um, Smith, you. <laughs> has he found something there? He could have done. No, I never want to put. I never ever want to put anybody off put, putting up a real big outsider. Well, I put Maddie off yesterday, and she should have. Well, you tried to. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. yeah but look, look, you back eighty to one shots, right? The, the vast majority of them are going to finish tailed off, aren't they? But every now and again, you're going to land on one. Uh, you know, it happens, so why not have a crack? And the Royal Ascot's a place to have a crack as well, isn't it? But we've Kiel's, why we've is she so much minutes. bigger than, than the others? Um, she's because she's 102. She's a bigger price than some of the horses she beat mm. at Newbury, and, and, and there's no weight pull. She's a stone to find a perfect yeah, power. She's, she's, you know, she has got plenty of fun. She's, she's going forwards, though, isn't she? She's going he. forwards. Horses, sorry, he, they can improve. Uh, you know, I mean, we're still talking about young horses. Now, when, when I look at the market here, I see Eraz and El Caballo. Um, El Caballo has been was favourite for a long while, uh, but they're second and third favourites. Yet Tiber Flow has almost doubled their odds, and he's beaten one and finished a short head second to to, the, to another. Like, you know, for me that doesn't make sense. You know, in another yard he'd have beaten El Caballo at Newcastle, and while in another yard Eraz would have beaten him at Newby, I think he hit the front too soon. Uh, and he's a strong, strong stayer. Hold on to him a bit longer. I think he's going to run a massive race. 11 to 1, it's a big price. He is a big price. I also like Wings of War uh, for Clive Cox, who you know does so well with sprinters. I um, think he's coming back. His second run, well, he was fourth to go, but his go at Ascot. Uh, but his second run um, got closer to El Caballo at, uh, at Haydock, was running on strongly at the end, didn't get a clear run. I think he'll run well too. I think it's wide open. I don't see the problem with going for an outsider either. But those would be my two against the field. So Tiber Flow would be a number one pick up. Yeah. What's do you fancy that? I think you've got to look at the Sandy Lane form <clears throat> for me personally. Um, I'm slightly obsessed with uh, El Caballo and I spent a lot of time talking to Carl about him. I'm really nervous about the ground for El Caballo. Really nervous. Um, enough to make me jump camp, which is not really like me. Um, and I might have, you know, egg on my face after this because El Caballo is actually one, originally my best bet of the week. Oh, and now you're not I'm, I'm, re I'm, re I'm really worried about the ground. It, honestly, it bothers me, just everything about it. So I, I can't get away from Go Bears Go. Is there, is, I think Go Bears Go is a stupid prize at nine to one. The ground is going to be absolutely key for this horse. He loves it. Look at his Ascot form as well. Look, he's run it three times. He's, <laughs> you know, two wins in a second. Dave Lochnane's in good form. I'm a racing. Everything for me, but I, I'm going to stick on the on the Sandy Lane form. I think that's I think that's the key to this race, and I'm going for Go Bears Go. Go Bears Go for you. Go Bears Go. I don't worry so much about fast ground at Ascot because you know, especially with a horse that's that's won on the all weather, because it's Ascot's sand basic. It's a more consistent surface than, than most other tracks, like you know. So uh, you know, I think horses that you might expect to want. Uh, a bit of cut in the ground will get away with it at Ascot because it I is just know. a more I've consistent seen, I've seen a couple that I thought they didn't I thought that action went a bit in some of the races that I've seen I'm not sure I'm not sure 
Is it disagreeing again? Well, Back no, no. Order. So just anything, any, so, any, anything with decent all weather form, I wouldn't worry about. I wouldn't worry so much about them running on fast ground at Ascot than do proper soft ground turf horses. Okay, if you were if you were kind of struggling to find a fancy in the Commonwealth Cup, you'd be even more puzzled now because I think we've given five different tips and there's only four of us here. But I think you should keep it simple with perfect power. It's go Bears go for Natalie. It is Tiber Flow for Keels and it is Riz at 80, 66 to 1 the screen. There's a bit of 80 get, out there. You can get a bit of 80 if you shop around for Bruce Millington in the Commonwealth Cup at 3.05. Moving on to the Duke of Edinburgh Stakes at 3.40. And Just Fine is currently your 92 favourite. It's 5 to 1 trawler man, 11 to 2 cattle for 7 to 1 contact and 50 to 2 bar. Right, Nat, kick us off with a winner. Just Fine looks a fine thing, doesn't it? But I'm going to be really brave in this race. I'm going to go for Johnny Murta. Smash or do I actually think this horse is good enough to win? I'm really, really not sure. <laughs> I've doubted myself. I just thought he was really good at the Curra. I mean, you'd be able to tell me even more. But that was that was good over the one too at the yeah. Curra, wasn't it? Yeah, it went up twelve pound for winning. But just to tell viewers, right, there's one of the owners, the syndicate that owns this horse. One of the owners is a footballer, a Gaelic footballer called Tommy Dowd. Okay, he's from my home county of Meath and my previous club, Dunderry. He's from Dunderry one of the most famous Gaelic footballers of all time. So, like, if this race was in Ireland, people would be coming up, looking for autographs, taking selfies with Tommy Dow, but it's going to be quite interesting in Ascot, because very Who few are going to know. For? He would have played for Mead, so he's retired now, obviously. Oh, okay. One of the greatest Gaelic footballers ever in Ireland, and he's going to be in Ascot today. So if you see Tommy Dow, go up and say hello to him, because he's a hero. <laughs> see, I like that story, but this, this, look, we know what Johnny can do at Ascot in the 27 days since he last ran. I mean, this is a bit of a risk, but I, you've got to throw in one risk of the day. Um, I think hopefully it will at least be there or thereabouts. It, it's a risk, but I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to yeah, go for it. Has a big chance. Johnny called Tommy uh, the Wayne Rooney of Ireland in the paper. Oh, did he? Yeah, that's, yeah, <laughs> that was his comparison. So it was. Have you found out for us at a big price here, Kilt? Uh Well, the interesting thing is we talk about um, a low draw being a disadvantage over a mile and a half at Ascot, and then of course yesterday Secret State comes out defies a low draw, and I wouldn't mind betting that he is. Uh, a group horse, a bit like Hookham, uh, who defied a low draw there as well. In this race, the last winner to score from a single-figure draw was Sugar Ray in 2008. You're joking. Uh, from a single-figure draw? From a single-figure draw. Single draw. That one, however, was trained by Sir Michael Stout, ridden by Ryan Moore. So um, Ooh, you can symmetry. tell that, you know, obviously he's been really, you know, he's been laid out for this as the Queen's horse. Uh, and he's potentially well handicapped. He's got a good chance, but I've got to go. I've got to go with the higher draws myself. I backed a couple. I backed Candleford, who is making his first, having his first run since last December. But last December, he absolutely bolted up on the all-weather at Kempton, and the horse he destroyed in second place was Coltrane. Now it was only a mile and a half. I fully appreciate that Coltrane need, needs further, but it, the form still looks pretty good, given that he's been second in the Chester Cup and, and won the Ascot Stakes since. And Candleford uh, ran at Ascot once last year. Perfectly good run. Finished second to a, to a stable mate. Um, I think he's. I think he's got to have a massive chance. And the other one, I back to Sir Rumi because I don't think he's got home over a mile and six the last two times. And his first time out ran at Doncaster this year when he split two horses miles higher than him in the ratings suggested to me that he'd probably come on a bit this season and he's actually running off a pound lower mark now than he, than he started. So I give him a go again. They're, they're both. Um, drawn on the outside uh, uh, and I think they'll both run well Beautiful This has got Bruce Millington's name written all over it <laughs> What have you found? You spend all have night You, you spend theorem? all night staying up studying form and thinking you've got an angle uh, about the draw and then obviously you know the walking form book comes out and nicks it off you So <laughs> anyway for that reason I am going to uh, shun the market leaders who are drawn single figures There must be something in there I think of those drawn in double figures at the head of the market, I think Contact has the best chance. But I'm going to go with the team that took out the Ribblesdale yesterday, Jessica Harrington and Shane Foley. I'm going to go with Ever Present, who started life winning a punches down bumper. Mm. Um, they abandoned the bumper career, switched into the flat, and only one horse has ever beaten him in four races. Now, he's obviously got a massive um, absence to overcome, just one run since last year, top weight, but... I'm a big fan of Jesse Harrington. I mm. think she knows how to get him ready. I, I, you know, he's not going to want for fitness, I don't think. So I think at 20 to 1, again, bags of extra places, I'll take a chance with Ever Present. And interesting, Ever Present's rate 107, and this is a not 105. So he's obviously the best horse in the race. I've got to put you on the spot here. Why is he allowed to run? 
Uh, because um, all handicaps now are, are open to horses rated one or two pound higher two, yeah. if they don't fill. But if there were if there were horses down yeah, the bottom, it's if they don't fill. They would get bal- they would get balloted out first. That's the funny thing. They ballot yeah. from the top. And Jessica Harrington says only if they're above. Late. Yeah, she yeah. says we were glad to get a run. I'm like, well, hang on a second. What do you mean you get glad to get a run? You get a top weight, but exactly mm-hmm. that's that's it. It's a sensible yeah. rule, isn't it? And to add to your theory, uh, I spoke to Jessica a few weeks ago, a good few weeks ago, and you know usually for Royal Ascot, trainers wouldn't know their teams that far in advance. And Ever Present was one of the horses she mentioned to me a long time ago that was coming over to Ascot. So he's obviously been trained for the meeting, so I'd say she's had this race in mind. When I was stating my case, I was trying to read your reaction there, and it was when you went like that that I thought you didn't fancy it. I mean, <laughs> what are the okay. vibes? Heels just fired I think he just had an edge, yeah. <laughs> Why does it have no. to be me? <laughs> so, <laughs> so over now, and I was like, no, no, I can't do it tonight. I can't. I'd have taken it. I'd have taken it. So you're not putting me off, DJ? No, big chance. Could be just a class horse in the race. Uh, the one that I like, actually, is Moctisab for Harry Redknapp. Now, forget the run at Epsom, because absolutely hated the track was one of my kind of Royal Ascot eye catchers going into the to the meeting that I've done for the last couple of weeks and uh, stall five obviously is a massive concern now after the form book uh, students have pointed out the draw bias to me but I think Moctisab is still well handicapped off 97 I could see him run the big race for Harry Redknapp, William Knight and Callum Shepherd. Moving on to the big one of the day. Yes, it's at 4.20. It is the Group 1 Coronation Stakes, and it sees the return of the unbeaten filly in Spiral, who's currently our 3-1 to favourite. 6-1, to the Kipco, 1,000 guineas winner, Caché. It is 15-2, Prosperous Voyage. 15-2, to Tenebrism. 8-1, to Discoveries. And it is 10-1, to Bar. Natalie Green, this is a fascinating Coronation Stakes. You're I smiling. You're smiling. I love Caché. Her heart is. Why are you look? She is. Why do you not think she's awesome? I feel like I'm talking to Graham Rodway here. How can you not love Cashy? I don't <laughs> get it. I. Uh, she has got the she's biggest good, heart, like. the best attitude. It's what, if you're looking at a racehorse, she's got the right brain, the right temperament. I don't understand. I don't, she's not a superstar, though. Yeah, but she can win this. There's been too many ups and downs in the spiral for me. There's too many niggly bits, niggly going on, background noise, little like me, little niggly noises. So I, I'm gonna. <laughs> no, we said that was Keels at the fair. Niggly, niggly noises. So I'm gonna take and spiral on. Your Twitter fan will be on after that. Oh, I've blocked him. <laughs> oh, oh, I just blocked them. Give me stick and you're out. Um, no, she just has a really good attitude and, a, and, a, and a, a great brain and love the ground. She love everything about it. God, don't don't be in doubt. Each way, Sandrine's worth a squeak. Mm. Definitely. Mm. So I'm going to play both. Okay. Each way on Sandrine and my in love with Cache Cache. is going to win. Okay. Well, you and Graham Rodway can go down together. I think Cache is a lovely filly. She's a smasher, but I just don't think she's a real star. I thought she took her opportunity in the Guinea skills, and I think that was her big she day. She skipped along. She skipped along. She oh, she, l- listen, she's tough. She's tough. She's run well there before, obviously. Um, I. You know, it wouldn't be a surprise if she won, would it at all? Like, you know what I mean? But this is this is a tight open race. We've got a favourite with question marks, obviously in spiral. Um, all the vibes weren't right about her for the Guineas, but she ended up missing. Has she come back? The ground is, the ground is very fast, and you know she's she's been off for a while. She's got an inside draw, uh, which may or may not be good, depending on. Uh, Depending on, on on what happens, I you know I think you've got to take her on. Uh, of course, she's by Frankel. She got a mile really really well last year, and you know Frankel might be the best miler we've ever seen, but he doesn't he doesn't get that many top class milers. Like you know his strike rate uh, in Group Ones over a mile is you know just only just over half what it is at a mile and a half, for instance. Really? Uh, yeah. So. Uh, so I have a feeling she might want a bit more. I, I, I've backed to, I've been absolutely convinced that Prosperous Voyage would have won the Guineas and been drawn on the same side as Cache, because um, I do think that far side that, at that meeting was, uh, was the right place to be. And so I backed that, but I've got to, go, I've got to add, give Discoveries another go. Yes, now I we're decided, talking. I decided that the other day, because I've been banging her drum since the automs. And weak. What's that face? It's a loyalty Look boat. at his face. <laughs> Ludicrous loyalty <laughs> boat. You get something in your head nine months ago that horse is good, and even when the evidence tells you they're not. Right. Well, yeah, yeah, but the evidence, the evidence, Take of, him the, down, ev- will you? Right, the evidence of one run. First of all, all right, well, what first, else do you want? first of all, right, she has. Uh, she is a sister to Alpha Centauri and a half sister to Alpine Star. 
and she was better than them two at two. And the progression they made from two to three was amazing. One of them, Alpha Centauri, was tailed off on her three-year-old debut as well. And then she came out and she won the Irish Guineas and then she came out, came here and won this race. And obviously Alpine Star won this race too. Now the vibes, because I'd been, I'd been on Discovery. Texting me. I'd been, <laughs> on, it out the vibes. I'd been on Discoveries. I'd been on Discoveries all, all winter. I kept chipping away at her for the guineas. Like, you know, and I was so delighted when I heard she was going. And she tumbled in price. And then she started in two, two or three days leading up to the race. The, the market went the other way. Mm. And the vibes were all wrong. And, you know, it was a time when Jessica Harrington was very quiet, winner-wise, very quiet. So her horses are running better. She's had a winner already. Uh, and obviously um, she had a, you know, would have had a second Cadillac if it hadn't been so sold uh, the, the day before as well. So I think the horses are really, really well now. And I am full of hope that we will see what she's really made of. I think you're right. I think the way she right. weakened and it has it gives yeah, a I, horrible I, replay I, to I watch. don't think they were that happy with her in the lead up to the guineas. I think she's only really coming to herself now. Go back to that two year old form, Bruce. Like the homeless songs was a mile behind her at the Curra. Why why are you so against her? Because of the evidence of what we've seen is it's, it's just one run. It's yeah, one run. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. We, you, you can't be forgiven a one run. I can no? First time out, Philly, three year old, time. She needs time. She's got time. She can win this person. Yes, yeah, she can win it. Desperate price. <laughs> cool. I thought she was a good price. Eight to right, one. You've had a 20 Massive. to 1 winner, an 80 to 1 winner, and 21, 20 to 1 winner from me so far. I'm going to play a forward defensive here. The favourite's a good thing. Massive price <laughs> in Spiral. What price would she be if Gosden had come out and said, she's absolutely fine now, she's over it, she had a perfect prep, it's all good, she'd be evens, yeah? No, but she hasn't. He hasn't. Yeah, he hasn't said it. <laughs> he hasn't said it, OK, but here, let me tell you about John Gosden, OK? Fantastic oh. trainer, brilliant bloke, top, top dude. Big book over but there. But very occasionally will kind of sow a sort of, you know, it's not gone too well. And then when they bolt yeah. up, everyone's like, Johnny G's a genius. And that, that's what's happening here, OK? That's what I think, anyway. At three to one, I'm more than happy to take a chance that the horse that absolutely had Prosperous Voyage and Cachet's Measure in the Bet365 Phillies Mile last year will come back out. The maestro Gozza will have a <laughs> spot on. At three to one, I'm more than happy to take the risk. He could be right, kids. He could be right. He could be right. He could, he could be, be right. right. He isn't, but he could be. <laughs> no, but he got like, he really, like, she's, she's the one in the race that at the end of the season, we could be saying she is the star of the season. And Whereas you'd be I, saying, how did we not listen to Millington and back her at yeah. three to one? No. I know, I say that all my life, Bruce. Well, yeah. you've got until 4.20 to make the right decision. OK, so Bruce is extremely keen on Inspiral in the Coronation Stakes. Myself and Keels are with Discoveries, and Nat is with the love of her life, which is Caché. The very best of luck to you, Nat. Thank you, I don't need it. That is the Coronation Stakes at 4.20, moving swiftly on to the 5 o'clock. It is the Sandringham, and this is a seriously competitive Sandringham this year. Uh, Herodia is 9 to 2, Fresh Hope 7 to 1, Cronell 10 to 1, 12 to 1, my fancy Zambak. I think Zambak could be a group race horse running in a handicap. I know she's got top weight off 99, but I think she's really smart. And it is Zambak for me. Right, Bruce, you were seriously, seriously strong in the Coronation Stakes. You can't How is your confidence here. going into no, this? No, you can't be, can you? You just can't be. I've taken a massive chance with one called Pink Carnation, who's in about the eighth clipper colours. But progressive, first time in a handicap. Quite like the win last time. Her and one other pulled, I think, nine lengths clear of the rest. The one that she beat has come out and won at Weatherby since. I just, I'm not confident, but I just take a chance on Pink Carnation. I think he's around about 25, 33 to 1. It is, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm more than happy to believe I've got this all wrong. She is 33 to 1. The, one. the one price that I can't say. And I was on the train the other day and I was talking to somebody on the phone and I was saying I fancied a horse. I don't know what it was, probably beaten. Mm. It was on Tuesday going into Wednesday. And I said, and he's 33 to 1. And this girl across me started absolutely <laughs> splitting herself <laughs> laughing. And I was going, she obviously doesn't fancy it either. Oh, so I, I go on the phone and she goes, say it again. Say it again. <laughs> and I go, what? She goes, say 33. So I literally said it like 20 times from uh, there. My, <laughs> anyway. She's my, filming you and putting on TikTok. 33 to 1. 33 my, to my 1. My daughter used to laugh at my dad saying that when she was younger. Is it just it was, an Irish it was, thing or is it, it just a me thing? No, it's an Irish thing. My dad did it as well, yeah. Okay. 
33 yeah. to 1. It's not as good as yeah. 33 and a third. <laughs> no, it's not. No. But anyway, Pink Carnation is 33 to 1 for Bruce Mellington. What do you like here? Yeah, other end of the market, I'm afraid. I think Heredia, Heredia will win. I Did I pronounce it right? Is it Heredia I have, I have or Heredia? I have no idea. It could be either, couldn't it? Like, you know, well, knows? Bruce, you were, you were an editor I'm of the Racing I'm a Heredia man. Well, how am I supposed Heredia to Heredia or Heredia? <coughs> I don't know. Heredia? No Heredia? Well, well, anyway, Heredia. Heredia. Heredia is unbeaten in three. She came out for her first start this season at York. She missed a break completely. Got stuck in behind horses as well. The eventual runner-up got first run, and how she picked her up, I do not know. She's an absolutely very high-class filly. Since then, Richard Anna has stuck her in the Falmouth. So you're talking yeah. about the top weight being the granite. He's put her in the Group 1. Uh, and, you know, the Falmouth's three or four weeks away. Like, you know what I mean? So if he thinks she's that good, she looked like she was absolutely top class. To be able to pull that amount of ground back, and she was very strong at the line. She'll love this extra furlong. If she's on the right side, I think she'll win. Herodia. But she could be on the wrong side and win her side easily and, <laughs> and be fifth. Talking of which, yesterday they were saying the going, yesterday the going stick was supposed to be fastest on the stand side and Doc is ordered to go nowhere near it. Mm -hmm. So who, how do we know where they're going? Just follow the leader. Today, so. today it says the centre is easily the slowest. And the stand side is slightly faster than the near side. But you can bet your life that they do not ride as the going stick says it is. So who knows? It'll be interesting, but it's Herodia for you. It is. I think she's ready. Excuse me, that. <laughs> <laughs> right, get everything out of your head. I'm getting Fresh it. mind. I'm understanding. I'm still thinking about flying dolphins from yesterday and all things come into my head. Um, what wins the Sandringham? I am with Pink Carnation. No way. way. You're joking. I, I. Great I, minds now. Well done. Holly Doyle, obviously most successful female jockey at Ascot. Who already will have won the Coronation, uh, the Commonwealth Cup at uh, uh, 80 to 1, by the way. There you go. So she'll be in fine spirits. Archie, of course, we had Brad Sell, which was one of my warmer tips. I didn't think it was going to win. That was great. Tempest ran well. It's only each way, because I do quite like Cronell. Do you know why? It looks maybe potentially thrown in. Off 92. Massive chance. So, and I hope a better day for Frankie and Thady. She's so keen the last day, though. I know, but I, too keen, way too keen. But I don't know, they're, they're the type of yard they're going to try and sort that out mm. at home, yeah? Like, mm. there's going to be a lot of work to, to try and take that keenness off. Um, but that is the negative. But Cronell, and yes, big one uh, each way on Pink Carnation. Pink Carnation? Nice Interesting name to see as well, what price. Isn't it? Pink What's Carnation goes off. She certainly won't be as big as she is now from all the people watching the show and following well, her. Well, I mean, it was only Nottingham, but they went miles clear the, the, the first yeah, pair. Yeah, absolutely. It was, I thought it was decent. It was still a nice performance. Great minds thinking alike here in the Racing Post studio. Pink Carnation for Bruce and Nat. Herodia for Keels, and it is Zambak for me in the Sandringham at 5 o'clock. Moving on, 35 minutes to the 5.35. It is the King Edward, the seven stakes. It's a group two. But this is a poor group too, folks. Holy God, kids. <laughs> this is desperate. Yeah, I mean, it's been a little bit of a feature. Some of the, you know, middle distance group twos have been poor, haven't they? they you know, there have been, you know, some of the group races, small fields. Uh, you know, so it doesn't, it, it, as a betting heat, doesn't interest <coughs> me. Why have so few of the derby horses come here? I don't know. Literally do not 13 know. days ago, like. Mm. I, mean, I don't know, you'd normally, you'd normally get a few more. Obviously, changing of the guard has the best form in the race. Didn't run badly in the derby. I did like the look of Ottoman Fleet at Newmarket, though. To almost go down on your nose coming out of the stalls and still come through and, and win with a bit in hand, I thought that was decent. Still got to step up on that. Um, right, I think he's obviously a very decent horse. Um, not a race I'm going to be that interested in punting in, though. Bruce, I backed and fancied changing of the guard in the derby. Really thought he had a big chance. I think. That's as good as he is in the derby. I don't think he could have done much more. I think he's slow, and I think he's vulnerable to an improver. But I've seen your tips. We set, we send them in before the show, and you fancy changing up the guard. So, yeah. so try and convince me. What I've jumped ship now. I just think he's really slow and needs a mile six. Tell me why he's going to win this. Well, he may have he may have used up a little bit too much gas getting to the front. That was obviously the tactic to get him there. He didn't come out brilliantly, but so he had to use up a bit of energy there. Uh, turning in, he's led. He's relinquished the lead about two out, and I thought he was actually going to get swallowed up. So I thought he stayed on reasonably he did, yeah. well to get fifth. 
The horse that finished seventh finished behind, well, well behind Eddie, so uh, Eldar rather. So that didn't really, no, need... that wasn't the first kind of bit of franking that we wanted. But I, I'm, I'm not too fussed about that. I just think this horse is clear best. I think, you know, there's a line through Savvy Victory that gives him miles in hand of, of Ottoman. Um, I know that that was basically formed at Chester on soft ground, but I think this horse is fine. I think he's 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 significantly the best he's got five to beat and i'm amazed he's not favorite so uh, it's a race that does interest me on that kind of never ignore the obvious principle i will be backing changing of the guard it is a kind of uh, uh, like we know how good changing of the guard is and obviously ottoman is here and you're kind of going he could get to there but we just don't know yet no so. we don't and, and i i i think i think changing the guard is really really solid but we need plenty of time because nat's basically picked pretty much every horse in this race so we better give her plenty of time to make her case because i've seen her tips go on <laughs> away you go um no i can see the love for ottoman fleet but i'm on lysander in this you put two up when we emailed the tips did i yes you did in this yeah i'll get the email yeah did two I? out of six yeah yeah you did yeah. Five short. Ottoman and Lysander. Yeah, you yeah. did, yeah. I'll probably back both of them. <laughs> yeah, a few oh, I'll probably, victory as well. Oh, I'll probably that do... Grand Alliance is good as well, isn't it? I'll probably yeah. do Ottoman Fleet Chase Home by Lysander. Or I might do Lysander Chase Home by Ottoman Fleet. Well... Or do... I might just see... I might just see for... No, I do like Lysander. And, and I want to sort of back up what, what Keels was mentioning about the um, all-weather form. Uh, on the sandy aspect. Listen up, Keel, she's talking to you there. No, I just want to I'm sorry. sorry. Well, Keel yeah. is continually educating yeah. 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 You do. Yeah. Just pretend it's I the learned. first date, okay? And you can't okay. use your phone. You have to put your phone down, right? First date, tell, talk no, to me. No, Keel does educate me. I'm going to be texting my mate saying, get me out of here. <laughs> yeah. I'm in here, folks. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> I do listen to you, though. So I'm looking at your weather form with Lysander. Keel's saying the sand track at Ascot. So that pleases me. I'm, 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 the better grounds are positive. For Lysander, with this horse, there's room for natural improvement. So that's what I'm trying to look at. Mm. That's my angle. Um, when he was beaten by um, Lionel, 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 um, Lionel had optimum conditions that day. It wasn't quite the optimum conditions for Lysander. So I'm actually reasonably warm on Lysander. I've listened to Keels. I've listened to your weather. Listened to Sandy Ascot. Conditions are good. I might be on something here. So after that, are you staying or going? Yeah, I might stay a little bit. Right, stay. Oh, he stay. gave a <laughs> wink. He gave a little wink there, so he did. So that it's it's. I, I think Ottoman Fleet is just going to surpass what changing of the guard has achieved. So it's Ottoman Fleet for me in the King Edward. The seven stakes. That's the five thirty-five. We've got to the finale. It is the six ten. It is the Palace of Holy Rood House stakes. Is that right, Bruce? Holy Rood House. Well, Holy Rood is in Ireland, so you Northern Ireland, so you should know that, shouldn't you? I should. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Slap on the wrist for me. Ladies, Church is the very well back six to one favour for Johnny Murta and the brilliant Ben Cohen. Corker is eight to one. It is ten to one Latin Lover, eleven to one Tippy Toes, who's been well supported in the market, and Rutin for Wesley Ward is twelve to one. Keels, I think Ladies Church potentially could just be a bit classier than these running and listed in group races. Laid out for the race by Johnny Murta, as he says in today's race and post. Could she just outclass them? She might be, but I have a feeling Corker's a group horse as well. Mm. You know what I mean? So, I, you know, I, it's one of those, there's lots of horses in this race, as you are in all these, in, in these sprints, but I don't think this is the deepest one. Uh, you know, and I think, you know, I thought Corker was a little bit of a bigger price than the other day. Uh, with Carl Burke, who's obviously flying this week, and another winner at York last time, and I was just really impressed because he was held up and he made the ground up to hit the front in no time at all and then went right away and i thought he won in the shot in the style of a horse that could be a group horse now he was tried in group company twice last year and was tailed both times but for the trainer to, to have one go at royal ascot and then another go later in the season he's obviously thought a lot of him for a while and he might just be coming to himself as a three-year-old so he's the one i've backed i fully respect the case for ladies church though. And A to one, you think it's still a bit of value? I think, it's, I, I think it's fair value. There's loads of extra places out there. If he runs as well as he ran at York last time, I know he's gone up a, a fair chunk in the weights. But if he runs as well as last time, then he'll be... He's he'll, a great way of going about he'll things, He'll be there about, yes, he does. Really yeah. likes to get up and on with it, yeah. Mike, yeah. So Corker for Keels at eight to one. Nat? I only have an each-way bet in this. That's perfectly fine, yeah. Nymphadora. 
Um, this is quite a big ask for this horse, um, but it was it was a good performance last time. It was kind of runaway performance at, at Chester um, to the winner. But I think Harry Davies on board with that valuable sort of five pounds. There's a few ticks there, and, and it's a race that I, I've got to be honest, I, I'm slightly struggling with. Um, this is tricky for me. I don't have a hugely strong opinion in this. Of course, I can see um, the appeal of Ladies Church, Corker, Latin lover. Um, but I'm just going to stick with my each way because it's quite a big... 18 to 1, Nymphadora. Price. Yeah, it's good. Happy days. 18 to 1, Nymphadora for Natalie Green in the finale. Bruce, send us home with a winner, please. Do you know what? I've been kind of theatrically bullish about some of my selections. The bottom line is this is a brutally difficult day. This is a hard day. You could easily walk away... I don't ruin it now, Bruce. No, you could easily <laughs> walk away with no winner, couldn't you? And 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 to to hit you with a massive field, five furlong handicap at the end of it, I mean, I, I, that broke me, to be perfect. <laughs> so I've, I've just gone for a very small each-way fancy on Sterling Knight, uh, trained by Ed Dunlop. Won nicely over six at the track last time. It's nice to, to see a bit of course uh, form at uh, Ascot because it is a little bit idiosyncratic. Um, it's not remotely confident. Gone up six for that and obviously it's dropped back a furlong, on, but that's okay. So probably the least confident tip of the morning is Sterling Knight. But it is tricky, isn't it, Ascot? Like that, to, honestly, two horses from yesterday in my head is Flying Dolph in that performance, like literally from out the back. Couldn't believe it where he made up. And um, you mentioned it before, but... Mojo Star could be really, really quite exciting. Yeah. Didn't right. even have race fitness. He's a cracking horse, isn't he? I mean, he is a cracking seriously, horse. so we might, we're always learning, but it, this this isn't easy. Have you got a strong opinion on this? Uh, yeah, I, I fancy Ladies Church, yeah. Oh, you do, yeah. yeah. Second strong Sorry, fancy of the day, that's all right. <laughs> that's all right. It is very, very tricky, though, but I just think Ladies Church might just be a little bit classier than them. But there's the tips on the screen. Sterling Knight for Bruce. There's Nymphadora for Nat. It is Ladies Church for me, and it is Corker for Paul Keely, now before we get to our naps, Bruce, big golf and weekend, the sweet spot, what a show, sweet spot live for the final round of the US Open. Some week, isn't it? Royal Ascot all week, and then we've got the US Open as well, and it was a fantastic first round at Brookline last night, DJ. You were probably tucked up or studying up because you've had a busy old week, haven't you? But all the big guns are there. There's, I think the leader's on minus four. And from minus four to minus two, all the big mm. guns are there. So it's boiling up to be absolutely fantastic. So myself and Steve Palmer live on YouTube on Saturday evening with guests. It's just a bit Sunday, of... Sunday, I presume. Sunday evening. Did I say Saturday? Sorry, yeah. Um, it's basically just a bit of fun. It's a little bit of an alternative. We don't take it too serious. We'll reference the betting all the time. So if you want to join us for that, we would love to have you along for Sweet Spot Live. And for on. people that don't know Steve Palmer, what a legend. Oh, he's just brilliant. He's just... Well, I mean... Kills. We've worked with him for years, haven't we? And there's only one Steve Palmer, that's for sure. And uh, he's I an think absolute he's... crackpot. Isn't and he, he? And he's Steve brilliant. Palmer stories you can share with his kills. No. It's, it's only half nine in the morning. Oh, so. no, no. I think you've well, got to wait. Not You've got to wait for another twelve hours. I'm afraid. One of my favourites. Before we go, <laughs> years ago, he he used to live down in. Well, he still lives in Weymouth, and he used to live. He, he used to doss on your car. Yeah, he used to stay with me on the weekend. Sofa. Yeah, anyway, one night he was looking for bed. Does doss mean sleep? Yeah. Yeah, we'd been out, and he and he came and he and he slept in my daughter's bed because she was away and my dog used to have a habit of sleeping underneath the bed and she'd gone under the bed before Steve got in. Steve got in drunk and and he was asleep in my daughter's bed. Blimey, that's not a nice memory. My daughter definitely wasn't there. But, and all of a sudden, <laughs> during the evening, during the night, my dog started scratching herself under the bed and Steve just thought there was like a ghost or something. And I could just hear this, what's going on? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> you never stayed with you again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that is Steve Palmer, winner without the dog. You can watch the sweet spot on Sunday night for the final round of the US Open. It's going to be crack. Hopefully Rory can do the business once again. But it's nap time. It's nap time for day four of Royal Ascot. Bruce, it's been a pleasure having your company this morning. Give us your nap for Friday at Royal Ascot. Changing of the guard, 5.35. Nice and simple. Oh, Paul Keeley. Morge in the opener, I know it's short, but I hope it's going to set me up for a good day. Because the scatter gun is out a little bit, and there's a few that have backed that on in those tips as well. So, yeah, I love Alaska. I love getting stuck in the big handicaps and having a few goes. So, uh, don't go mad with the, with the, uh, with the layouts, but uh, I, do, I do throw a few arrows, and hopefully I'm going to land a few today. Maj, I can't remember Paul Keeley being as sweet on a shorty as he is with Maj. And for you, Natalie Green? I'm Maj. Maj as well. We have two Maj's. Yeah, well developed. Uh, so let's get those naps up on this Lovely, jubbly. And a young <laughs> and beautiful 
Paul Keeley. Oh my God. Look at that fine specimen of a man. Keels, how long ago was that? No, no, put it back up, guys. Uh, put it God, back up. That was his infant school that's, picture, wasn't it? That's, 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 that's at least 30 years ago. That that's gorgeous. Uh, You've changed again as old DJ on that. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Yeah, mine is shit. I still had a ball patch, oh, Daddy, though, just by the look at it. Bruce, you look very smart. away now. Oh, like an egghead in that picture. It won't change it because I think they enjoy me looking like an egghead. Bruce, you look very dapper there. So glad I'm not at Ascot today wearing that clobber, but they've relaxed it, haven't they? You don't mm. have to wear the hat, you don't no. have to wear the tie, and you don't have to wear the jacket. It's good, isn't it? Of course it is. It makes total sense. It, it's, it's actually not safe mm. for humans to be out in 90 degrees in that clobber. I totally agree. And they will be brilliant with horse welfare as well. It's really, really important. There'll be loads of water. They'll all be cooled down properly. It's, mm. They have it set up well. Absolutely. Well, the train's a bit smelly on the way home. Oh, the train on the way home yesterday. My <laughs> God. It, what, BO it felt like about seven hours. I bring a bottle of aftershave with me everywhere, right? Because I would stink in sweat, like. So I'm I putting you aftershave. Meant to drink. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I like spraying at the whole. The other thing I always smell. I don't look great, but I smell okay. You always smell good. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So the train's just for, a bit smelly. Yeah. Oh, this train is desperate. Yeah. Yeah. That's been the struggle of the week. That's I been thought, the train. I thought you they'd get you a helicopter. No. No. Unfortunately not. No. No train for me. With the poppers in the train. Uh, so that was. Day four at Royal Ascot, Coronation Stakes Day. It's going to be a cracker. Don't forget, we're back for the final day tomorrow for Go Morning Ascot. Bruce, it's been brilliant having you. Keels and that, thanks a million for everything. You'll be back tomorrow, I think. No, we will, yep. Yeah, yep. we'll be back tomorrow. And uh, we will hopefully finish Royal Ascot on a high. That was Good Morning Ascot. Thanks for watching.